because it's going to happen. You know what I just did? <laughs> I pressed the button. Whoa. Is it I, red? I pressed the button. Oh, I never actually noticed it was red. It's red. Is it? Change the button from blue to red. Yeah, look right there. Because I pressed the button, we're all hanging out. So hello, everybody. Yay. Glad you're here. Thanks for being here on this fine Wednesday evening, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time and other times around the world that isn't 8 p.m. if you're in a different standard time zone place like that. Okay. That's the kind of information you get uh -huh. here uh -huh. on the Primetime Aquatics live stream. So tonight, I actually have a thing. Did you know that? Okay. Like a plan? A plan. I, I have something I wanted to talk about. I love it when a plan comes together. I, Wow, we're already going with the quotes, huh? Yeah. I ain't getting on no plane. Hannibal? Well, that just gave it away. I wasn't going to say the name. So yeah, I do have a plan. Uh, we're going to go over some things today. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, because we still get this question a lot, and that is if you've got a filter, where do you put all the media? Like what's the proper order? What's going to maximize the filter's performance? Make it be the coolest filter you've ever had. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing. A lot of times I think people, they get a filter and then perhaps they are disappointed by that filter. And it's really not the filter's fault. It's just I put all the stuff in, but if you put it in the wrong order, huh. it could be messed up. So I figured we'd spend a few minutes. I've got some demonstration things. Oh, is that, that what that's, all this stuff that's is? That's what this mess is. That's why oh. I was hoping you weren't going to move it around when you were just editing your video. I'm like, I hopefully she realizes I, it's, all this is up here for a reason. So yeah, we're going to be doing a demo today. Cool. It, with my make-believe hang-on-back filter that's pretty much kind of like a hang-on-back filter. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah. So announcements for this fine evening, as we always do. Uh, Monday's video, if you haven't seen it yet, 40 gallon breeder stocking options. That was a longer video. I think I have this feeling as we get into these larger tanks and some mm. of you have already asked for, hey, what about the 55? Can't wait for the 75 <laughs> and, and the 125. Yep, we're going to do those. But as we get into these larger tanks, you get more options. And so we have to start breaking it down into different categories. So if you have a 40 breeder or you're thinking about getting one, Monday's video might be helpful. What did you do today? Plant video. That's why I'm wearing my plant nerd shirt. Plant nerd. Yep, you nerded out on plants. Yeah. Well, I've started the series. A lot of people have asked for this. Plants that are suggested for each tank size. So I started off with the little ones, the tank sizes that are less than five gallon. My five plus bonus picks my favorites that I like to use in that size tank. And I had no idea you were going to do this series. And then I as I saw, I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. That's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. You know, we get so used to doing that with fish, fish yeah. stocking options. You're okay. basically doing a plant stocking options for different tanks, live plants, yeah. right? That's yeah. a pretty cool thing. I know. And then tomorrow, you were feverishly working on a video for... So for those of you who don't know, because I know this gets confusing, so can we just back up a second? The Monday video I reference is on Primetime Aquatics. Your video came out today when I say Joanna's video. Mm -hmm. That's on her channel, The Smallscape, which yeah. deals with... Nanotanks yeah. and plants. Nanotanks and plants. And tiny fish. And then you've got your tomorrow video, which is coming out on your other channel. Yeah, my land channel. Your land I, plant, yeah. land thing channel. Yeah, I pulled it out of the small scape yep. so it didn't get any con yep. confusing. And yeah, so that's what I'm working on. And I do the editing for those crazy videos. Which is good for me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the container joy, that mm -hmm. container joy, that's your... No, your, the. Uh, no, the container joy. The that's small scape your, container joy. Yeah. So that's your land plant one for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the members only video coming out tomorrow. I think we'll head back down to the fish room because last week we did a yeah. sciency thing. So I want to switch it up. We'll be back down in the fish room. Got some stuff I want to show you there. Saturday, you've got a small scape video coming out. I do. Yeah. I'm excited well, about it. Well, actually, and then Friday, we did all these channels now. Uh, Friday on Primetime Aquatics. Are you confused yet? Because we are. <laughs> one, you know what's going to happen one day? One, And I know this is going to happen at one point. I am going to release a, I am going to upload a video to mm -hmm. the completely wrong channel. Oh yeah. I'm waiting for that to happen too. Like, you know, it will happen to like container joy was like fish room tour or all <laughs> of a sudden you're like primetime aquatics head planters. You're like, what the heck is this? Isn't fish. I don't know how to hear, man. This guy's losing it. So yeah, Friday on primetime aquatics, I've got a cool showdown. You don't even know what it's about. No. Nope. And I have a feeling after I do it, you're going to be mad at me. 
Oh. Yeah. You're going to be mad because I did a showdown and you weren't in it. And it's probably something that you have something to say. Well, that's what the comment section is for. Yeah, that's a, that'll be showdown part two. All the things he missed. So we'll <laughs> see about that. Yeah, so that's what's good. That's what's so that's what's been going on this week on the channels uh, where you can find us we've been talking about it for a while now this Sunday is the Greater Chicago Cichlid yeah. Association Woo-hoo. Fish Swap great place to save a lot of money on fish and plants and wood and rocks and we will be there our fish are on the website primetimeaquatics.com if you are in the area want to buy some fish ahead of time and then just pick them up at the swap you can do that check out our website and then we got Aquashella coming up in what do we got just over a month five mm-hmm. weeks yeah that's about five crazy. weeks away orlando hope to see you there it's gonna be a really fun time so looking yeah. forward to it mm-hmm. we were working on booth layout last night and For all you. kinds of stuff it's it's gonna be fun it's i think it's gonna be a fun time mm. so i hope to see you there it's gonna be cool so <clears throat> you got anything you want to announce before i get into tonight's subject uh no okay so my my shirt everybody's commenting on my shirt this plant nerd from Agno Aquatics in uh, Ohio. Yeah, best uh, one of the best fish stores of all time. Strongsville, right? No, uh, near Strongsville. Is it? Well, yeah, because that's where the Ohio Cichlid Association thing was, and oh, they were okay. only a few blocks or a few miles away from there. So it's around the Strongsville, Ohio area. Okay. 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 Let's get into this. So we get this question a lot, and I figured we would just do a demo here on the live stream tonight. It won't take a long time. We'll get to all your fish keeping questions, I promise. But we get a question, and it basically centers around, okay, I've got this new hang on back filter. I've got a new canister filter. What do I do to maximize its ability to do what it does in a filter, in a, in a fish tank? And that is filter the water, make it appear clean, make sure we're getting surface area for nitrifying bacteria to you know, ensure that there's no ammonia or nitrite in the tank. And so what I wanted to do is we're going to bring out the fake hang on back filter compartment. And I, I use this, it's just a fish collection container, but just imagine there's an intake, you know, and this is the return. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm using this because it's clear so you can actually see what's going on and how we pack out our media. And this would be pretty much the same thing if this were a canister filter in terms of the way that we layer it. So first thing, a lot of people make a big deal out of hang on back filters and the water flow. And so I want to talk about that first because there's really basically two different ways a hang on back filter is going to move water through the compartment. Way number one is it's going to come in from the intake, imaginary intake. It's going to flow in. It's going to go to the bottom and then it's going to go from the bottom up to the top and then back out. Okay, so that's way number one. Water flows from the bottom to the top, goes through all the, all the filter media. For the most part, that's, I think, what people prefer. They're like, oh, I like that so much better. The other way, and so the, the filters that do that are basically like your aqua clears and your Seachem titles, right? So they're going to flow. Water's going to come through. the. It's going to go in the intake. It's going to go from the bottom. It's going to flow through the filter and then out the top. So Seachem, Marine Land, or, sorry, Seachem and aqua clear come to mind. The other way in which water can flow is you got the intake. It goes in. And then the water kind of flows from back, so like the back of the thing to the front. Instead of going from bottom to top, it goes back to front and then out. A lot of people believe that that is a less efficient way for the water to flow through a filter. And I guess I sort of kind of agree with that. I mean, we just look at it logically. However, the reality is in our fish room, I've never found that to really matter. I haven't. It certainly doesn't matter in terms of biological filtration, housing microbes that are going to accomplish the nitrification process, doesn't matter at all. When it comes to mechanical filtration and trapping particulate matter in the filter so it doesn't wind up back in the fish tank, it might matter a little bit, but even still, I feel that our Marine Land Pro series, our Aquion Quiet Flows, I'm trying to, there's other ones as well, they do a great job of filtering our tanks provided that we are maintaining the filter media. They don't do any worse at least in terms of mechanical filtration, than the Seachems, than the Marine Lands, or I'm I'm sorry, Seachems and Aquaclears. So I think they're fairly comparable. Okay, now all that being said, let's pretend this is our filter compartment. What's the first thing I'm going to do? Well, we're going to, in this particular example, I think it's just going to be easiest to pretend the water is going to flow from the bottom. So it's going to come through the bottom and work its way to the top and then out. All right, so this is really about the order. So first thing, 
I have, and I just kind of grab stuff from the fish room. This, we're going to call this the filter sponge. It's actually an intake sponge, but shh, we don't, actually, it wouldn't even matter. We could put this in here anyway, but let's just say this is sponge. Now, when it comes to sponge material, I prefer sponge that is going to have a smaller pore size. So our medium to fine sponge, and you're shaking mm -hmm. your head yes, right? Why yeah. don't you like the really coarse stuff? Well, is there a reason? It doesn't really seem to trap a whole lot because <laughs> it's got you know big pores. Exactly. Yeah. So the larger coarse material, it doesn't trap as well. And even the stuff it traps, I think a lot of people, especially when they're talking about cleaning sponge from a hang on back filter or a sponge filter, they're like, yeah, I grabbed this thing and it just released all the stuff back in the <laughs> tank. That happens with coarse sponge. That does not, at least in my experience, with all of our fish tanks, that pretty much doesn't happen with the, the smaller pore sponge filters that we use and the smaller pore sponge that we use in our hang on bags. So this is going to go in first. All right, so this is our first layer. Ideally, you want your sponge to cover the entire area. All right, so right now, again, our water is coming from the bottom. And it's eventually going to go through the top. The reason we're putting the sponge in first, again, if the, this is probably about the pore size I would use. It would be around a medium to fine pore for the sponge. What that's designed to do is trap a lot of the large material. All right, so that's its job. That's all I care about. Trap the big particulate matter that's flowing through the intake, coming through, winding up in the bottom, and the water's flowing out. It's trapping all that stuff. Okay. The next thing, I'm going to use filter floss. Now, for us, filter floss, we just buy this stuff in bulk. You can get it on Amazon. We've done videos on it. Wow, you can get it from gemco.com. You can, people use like pillow cotton filler stuff. Just make sure it's aquarium safe. But this is what's going in next. All right, so no matter what you're using in terms of the filter flossy stuff, I didn't, I, I was stupid. All right, I obviously didn't cut this to size because I didn't think that far ahead. So obviously this would be something that would be more cut to size. But this is going to go in next. It actually doesn't, eh, it works out just fine. I think it works out pretty well. So this is going to go in next, just like that. The purpose of our filter floss is to trap all of the stuff that the sponge did not trap. So right now, our primary concern, and this would be the same thing if it was a canister filter, our primary concern is trapping stuff from the water column in the filter so our tank appears a little bit clearer. Will beneficial bacteria grow in the sponge? Absolutely. Will it grow on the filter floss? Sure. Will it grow all over the edges and the sides of the filter compartment itself, provided that it remains wet? You bet. Okay. So this is what we have so far. Now, for us, this is where we stop. Okay. This is where we end it because for us, our hang on back filters are really there to trap particulate matter. That's what we care about. All right. So this is going to make the water appear clean. We basically use hang on back filters in our more heavily stocked tanks. As most of you know, we have sponge filters on the vast majority of our tanks. All right. Now, if, if you were using some type of chemical filtration, so that would be your carbon or your purigen, and I don't have an example of that. I'm very sorry. That would usually be in a filter bag. That would go next. And then the last thing. And you don't have to use the chemical filtration. Like I said, we don't use it at all. That's why I don't have any to show you. The next thing would be stuff like bio rings, bio media. This is surface area for the beneficial bacteria to adhere to to make sure you're getting that nitrification process. The microbes on the surface of this bio media is going to convert ammonia to nitrite, nitrite to nitrate. We want that to be the last thing. That's going to go on top just like this. Now, the reason we do this, why is it last? The microbes that do the nitrification process are aerobic, just like we are. They need oxygen. They need to breathe, so to speak. If this media gets covered in detritus, gets covered in fish waste, the microbes can't breathe. All right? It would be like covering you full of dirt and sand and be like, good luck with that. <laughs> these little microbes are like, wait, something's wrong. The microbes are adhering to these surfaces. So if those surfaces, if the microbes adhere to the surfaces, and then those surfaces get covered in nasty stuff, they suffocate, they die. Now you've got a water quality issue because your biological filtration is no longer working. All right. So 
having the sponge and the filter floss first is going to trap most of that detritus, most of the fish waste, the uneaten food. It's going to keep this biomedia, the surface of the biomedia, clear and it's going to keep it so that the microbes are unobstructed from the surrounding area. So this is basically how we do that. Again, if you had chemical filtration, it really, I guess it really doesn't matter. You could put the chemical filtration here. So if you had carbon or you had purigen and you wanted to put that at the top, it's fine. But generally speaking, sponge, filter floss, some type of biomedia, if you're going to use it. Again, we don't. I think if you were to look at every single one of our filters, we don't have this because, again, we're using our hang on back filters primarily for mechanical filtration, just pulling stuff out. Okay, so that's how we do this. Now, a couple questions we always get. Okay, if this is what you're going to do, how do you maintain it? It's not too bad. This, we just pull out. You can just chuck this in the, you wanna keep this obviously moist because you've got your microbes on here. So don't pull this out of a filter while you're cleaning this and let this dry because you're gonna wipe out all your microbes. So put this in a bucket full of water, tank water. Um, you could set this aside. If it's really starting to get nasty, rinse it off. All right, if you wanna shake it out in a bucket of tank water, you can. Or you put it in tap water. I know, oh my gosh, you're gonna kill your microbes. No, you're not. But anyway, so just make sure this is not covered in stuff. And usually if you're doing this right, it won't be. Let me put this aside here back in the other bucket. Filter floss. When the filter floss, so we're, we're using white filter floss here. If this starts to get all gunked up and brown looking, we change it out. For us, that means we have to change this out every single week for most of our tanks because they're heavily stocked enough that this is gonna get gunked up. So this just goes ringed out right in the trash. This sponge is gonna also need to be cleaned for us weekly. Again, because of the way that we stock our tanks, this has to be rinsed out weekly. What do we do? Right in this tap water, right in the sink. I've done videos on why it's not going to destroy everything. Uh, so this is going to go right in the sink. We're gonna rinse this out until the brown nastiness stops coming off and right back in it goes. New filter floss goes in just like so. My biomedia that I kept wet goes back on top just like that and boom, we're done. So that, I'm gonna have no place to set this down, but that's how we pack out our hang on back filters. If I was doing canister filter, the same general rules would apply. So that's pretty much what we do. So what do we got over here? What's oh, lots of <clears throat> lots of questions here. The first one that I see is um, <clears throat> why don't you wash and reuse your floss? We can, and sometimes we do. That's a great. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, I just dripped water all over myself. This bottle's cool, but it's not so great for water. It's not so great for water drinking. Um, <laughs> you absolutely can rinse out your filter floss. For for the most part, ours it gets nasty enough where it's not worth it and we buy it in gigantic gigantic rolls so it's it's just easier for us to kind of wring it out and the, or and then just toss it right in the garbage um, if it's lightly used and maybe you know again i'm not doing a lot of the filter maintenance but if luke or eli one of the boys sees it, oh this isn't so bad they squeeze it out rinse it out back in the filter it goes the one thing you have to consider though is if you continually do that those fibers are going to break down it's going to trap less and less stuff so it is going to become a little bit less effective so great question mm -hmm. what else you got all right uh pete the drone guy Hello, I just got a Title 35. I have the AquaClear 30. How do I transfer media? Um, what would you re recommend I do? Can you answer my question, please? No. Moving on, next question. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it, it, all right, so it depends on, why did this thing die on me? It depends on what you want to do. So if you are replacing the AquaClear 30 with the Title 35, then I would just put the media in the new filter and just be done with it because the only minor issue you're going to have is the fact that the they're not the compartments aren't quite the same size. So you might have to jam that sponge in there a little bit more or if you've got filter floss, put that in there, bio rings, whatever, put that in there. But if you're just doing a replacement, just put the media in the new filter, problem solved. If it's, okay, I've got the AquaClear 30, I've got a a Seachem Title 35, they're going on different tanks, then what we want to do is we just want to make sure that 
the media that's in the old filter has been in that filter for at least four weeks. And then you can transfer part of that, whether that's bio rings or the sponge, then you can transfer that to the Seachem Title 35. So that's how I roll with that. Okay, pal Joey, 1957. Hey, what's going on pal Joey? It's been a little while. Polyester fiber should be placed first in the filter compartment chain. You want to use it as a dispensable mechanical medium and use the sponge as a permanent bed for bacteria. Um, I disagree. And I disagree because when you put the filter floss first, there's no need for the sponge. At that point, the sponge is just really your biological media. So then you don't need the the, the ring. So people do that. And I, I know in the, in like if you got a sump, if I had a sump system, I would probably do that because you're absolutely right because of that surface area because you would be, those sponges are harder to clean. But when you're talking about a hang on back filter, I want my sponge to trap the large stuff because as soon as that filter floss gets clogged with large stuff, now your filter shuts down, it slows down. So it's more for me a, a matter of keeping my filters up and running for at least a week, especially in heavily stocked tanks. Uh, and, and the sponge is, it's, it's reusable, right? So you can just go in there and, and rinse it real quick and then put the media in. But the minute you put the floss first, your sponge is now, it's biological. It's not, it's not doing anything at that point in terms of mechanical filtration. Hold on, I want to answer this real quick. Whips World, thank you so much for the super chat. Whips Long World. time listener. First time commenter, of course you are. <laughs> how important is it to keep the space between the base and the sponge of, hold on. How important is it to keep the space between the base and the sponge of a- Sponge filter. Sponge filter, oh, okay. Like oh. Fish love to bury it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I don't find it to be incredibly important because it's not like the sponge filter is creating enough suction where it's gonna suck the sand up in the sponge filter. Unless, unless you're using a coarse sponge filter then it becomes more important because and that's one of the other things i'm not a big fan of when it comes to coarse sponge and it's, it's a problem that we've had in fact it's one of the reasons why i removed most of the coarse sponges from our fish room i've actively been doing that because you'll get cichlids and stuff and they'll spit sand you know places and that's coarse sponge filter traps all that they're kicking stuff up if the sponge itself makes contact with the sand then that's getting trapped in there. So if it's a coarse sponge, then I really do want to elevate it as much as I can because as soon as you pull that out, and now for us, we're cleaning it in the sink. I throw that bad boy in the sink and now there's sand everywhere and that's yeah. really, really annoying for me. So mm -hmm. um, other than that, if it's a fine sponge, I don't worry about it as much. Hmm. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, and uh, in the house, Mary Page is here. Mary What's Page, up? What's hi. Up? And we've got Oink Master Supreme Forever Man in the Man in the phones here, mm. and Dave from Iowa. Thank you very Thank much, you everybody. To all of our wonderful moderators. Fish fan, uh, twenty gallon long member for not uh, one, not five, but eight months. Thank uh, you very much. Yay. I enjoy your channels. Where do you, where do I buy some type of guards for the Seachem Title Intake Tube? So no, none of my fry is trapped. Thank you for bettering my life. Well, thank you so much for being here. The, let's see, intake, intake tubes. You could try from the last time I looked, Flip Aquatics, Flip Aquatics, our channel sponsor, uh, they did have different size intake sponges. The, the big thing, the most important thing when it comes to, and I don't care what kind of filter you have, when it, and this, by the way, this other one, let me take this out of here again just to show you. This was actually a, a Marine Land. This is a Marine Land Pro um, intake sponge. But the really important thing is that it's actually an intake sponge is that the only opening you have is in the part that's going to go in the intake. This bottom part needs to be closed because if this bottom part is not closed, all that's going to happen is the water is going to go through the area of least resistance, which is right through the bottom. And then the sponge is more or less bordering on useless in terms of blocking stuff that's going to get into your filter. And we didn't really even address that when it came to um, doing that. I like these for exactly the reason that you said, and that is if I've got snails, I've got shrimp, or I've got fry that could potentially be sucked up, I think if you're going to use a hang on back filter or a canister filter, these can be really, really good. So 
Triflip Aquatics, um, these are probably sold at Petco or PetSmart. Again, it's just a Marine Land one. Uh, obviously, this is pretty big, so you'd have to make sure you've got the size right. Where I don't necessarily like these as much is when I'm not worried about those things because, at least from for me, when I'm cleaning a tank, I find it a lot easier to go and grab the filter floss and the sponge from the back of the compartment than digging in the tank and pulling this thing off of the intake because obviously this is going to get clogged up first right and that's going to reduce the flow of your hang on back filter so what i was finding is when i was using a lot of these or not a lot but a fair number of them in tanks that didn't have shrimp snails that could get sucked in or small fry these were becoming a big pain in the butt and so i was finding myself having to constantly go in take these off rinse them out just so that i could get the filter flow back to the way it was so I actually stopped using these unless, exactly like you said, you've got little ones that you don't want being sucked up, then it makes a whole lot of sense. The other thing to consider with the Seachem if you're dealing with fry isn't only the intake, it's the surface skimmer. That, I, you'd probably have to do some type of a, I, I, I don't even know, because you'd have to find a way to attach that to the, the surface skimmer without making it permanent so that you could still clean it because that's another weird place where shrimplets and little baby fry are going to get sucked up a little bit. Shrimplets. All right. What else you got? You got something over there? In um, your, uh... Oh, gosh, I did. Oh, here. Um, this is a follow-up from uh, your pal Joey. Cool. Our pal Joey. Okay. Pal Joey's been with us a long time, man. I remember pal Joey and I... He, Pal Joey doesn't like in, in, uh, hang on back filters because he and I share, <laughs> well, we share a, a common opinion and that is the intake and the return mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are right next to one another. I know. And so he, yeah, and I, really... I agree with him, I really like to have, I would love to have an intake elbow and an extender where the intake was at the other side of the tank. I'm with you. I'm che with you, dude. Cheers. And somebody wanted to know where your Visco Girl bottle was. Hey, don't make fun of my Visco Girl bottle. It's I, in the show off what you got. I got oh, that for him. Yeah, for Christmas. this is Christmas. It's so a... that's why I was actually laughing every time he was complaining about his water bottle. Because I'm thinking that's what you're getting for Christmas. Yeah, I got it's a Harley a Davidson little water. It's glass. Yeah, it's glass. Uh, the only problem is, and you're going to see this happen all night, is it, it drips on my on my shirt. So, huh. but that's okay. Maybe you're using it wrong. I probably I'm probably used to the Visco Girl water bottle. So. <laughs> But I'm up. I can take it. All right. So wait. Anyway, yeah. Pal Joy has a follow up. All right. If you can throw out 50% of the dirt, why not do so? The sponge will still be mechanical, going second in line. And greetings from New York City. I hope you're doing well. Yeah. I. I, I listen. I. I see what you're saying. I just prefer that the the way that I do it. It's it's worked for us. Mm -hmm. That's just how I roll. Yeah. Cheryl. Is there a reason why some hang on back aren't made to self prime? To me, it seems they all should be if the power goes out. Don't get me started on that. Oh boy. Um, yes, I 100% agree with you. I did a video a while back and I said there are two features, at least for us, outside of just doing, you know, test and evaluation. But if I'm buying a hang on back filter for a fish tank that I'm just, I'm buying it because I need it, not to, you know, test it and then do reviews on it, two things I must have on that hang on back filter. One is an adjustable flow. And I mean an adjustable flow that actually makes a big difference. And so this is not a knock on, well, it is a knock on AquaClear. That little thing, that little <laughs> adjustment, it's cool. And they were one of the first ones to do it, I think. But it's not enough of an adjustment for me when I really want to adjust the flow like what you do with the Seachem Tidal Line or the Marineland Pros. When you have that adjustment, it will turn it down to a trickle or you can go full blast. And so you've got this really big range. And so I really like that because, oh, you know what? I had in my 20 gallon a bunch of, I don't know, tiny little rainbow, fricata rainbows, and they were always zipping around the tank and they didn't care about the flow. But two years later, I wanted to put a betta in that tank and some other just slow, chilled out fish and they can't handle that flow. The nice thing about a filter with an adjustable flow is you just turn it down and you don't have to get a new filter. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about blowing your fish all over the place. So that's a nice thing. It also allows you to use larger filters in a bind on smaller tanks if you need to. So that's thing number one. Mm -hmm. Thing number two is exactly what you brought up. And that is the self-priming feature. 
I really, really like that feature. I like that in the Seachem title line. I like that in the new Marineland Pro series. Not sponsored by either one of those companies. I just like that feature because one, at least in our experience, they've been silent. For every Seachem title that we have, for every Marineland Pro filter that we have, the only thing we can hear is when the water is going through the return and then hitting the top of the tank, you know, the, the surface of the water, you hear that little bit of water running. But in terms of the filter, I have to look in every one of those tanks to see, oh, hang on, that filter's running, okay? Because it's one of the things I do every 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 day when I go down there, I'm looking, making sure all the filters are running, that includes the hang on backs. I have to look in there to actually see that they're running because I can't hear them. The other part of that is the self-priming feature because one, the reason they're so quiet is the motor is inside the water, right? On the sea chems and on the on the new marine lands. So with that motor, and also on the Aquion quiet flows. So the, the motor is inside, thus it's quiet, and then you've got the self-priming feature. So yeah, if you get a little, you know, a little blip in the in the energy and mm -hmm. your electricity, we've had filters go down. And that I mean, a lot of them. It's not any one brand. I and mean, we've had AquaClear stop working. We've had the old Marineland penguins sometimes go down. I mean, when they've actually been like eight, ten years old, um, the the uh, top thin ones. So I mean it, it's it's not a it's not a brand thing it's just that's one of the flaws if you will of having the motor outside the tank is oh my gosh the filter lost flow it lost suction now some filters will restart some don't especially as they get older sometimes and so once that stops now you're oh I've been at work for ten hours or I went away for the weekend and my filter wasn't running and now I've got a big problem hmm. so I agree with you what's what you got over there. You got anything? Okay. Um, Jeremy would like to know, um, I watch your live streams every week. Nice. What do you recommend for media in a hang-on back filter in a black water tank? I don't want to remove the tannins. Uh, don't do any chemical filtration. But I don't, I don't think anything that we've had, so whether it was the sponge, the filter floss, or the biomedia, none of that's really going to remove tannins. What's going to remove your tannins ultimately is your water changes. There's there's no way around that yeah. unless you add more tannins, mm -hmm. more you know botanicals. You did that video last week. If you, by the way, if you haven't yeah. seen that video, I highly recommend it. There's a Fun lot of booties. different botanicals on her channel, The Smallscape, uh, that you did that last Saturday or Wednesday. I don't remember which. But you can keep adding that stuff, and that will keep giving you that black water thing. But the filtration, if you don't have any chemical filtration in there, it's going to stay there until you start water changing it out. Mm. Amanda, member for 11 months. Hi, Amanda. That's one month away from being Whoa, a year. Big one too. Pretty cool. I have Corey's in one tank. The filter gets so gross so fast <laughs> compared to other tanks. Is it because they're constantly kicking stuff up? Kick the dust up. Okay, that's the only singing you're going to get from me today. Good. Um, yeah, I'm going to spare you the rest. That'll Good. be the next thing we do besides movie quotes. I'll oh, just start no. singing. Do, 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 do. No. Yeah. Because, no, because when you do that, I even I have no idea. What if I whistle it? No, usually because it all sounds like Bob Dylan. Yeah, I can whistle like Bob Dylan. Like you do every single song Pretty like Bob much. Dylan. I know. Only when I whistle. So weird. All right, so anyway, mm -hmm. yes, that is actually to me... One of the benefits of Cory Cats, I love Cory Cats, especially, especially, especially piles of them. If you have sand, yes, piles of Corys. But one of the downsides of sand is it, it all the stuff, the gunk is visible, right? And so Cory Cats, I love Cory Cats. I love some of the cichlids that kind of go through and sift through the sand a little bit. Some of the African cichlids, geophagus, because they do they they kick all that stuff up and then on a hang on back filter or canister filter it's all going into the intake and it's sucking that stuff up i like it because you don't want to look at it so cory cats are like you know what they're like look think here you ready for this you're cory cats this is gonna be so cute they're like little brooms Aww. right they're like little spotted or striped brooms yeah they're just going through sweep 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 side 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 and they're kicking the stuff up and they're making their little home a little cleaner and a little Aww. bit nicer for you and it gets caught up in the filter floss like hey can you change this for us we're going to keep sweeping <laughs> right so you can That's see cute. cory cats like in it. a whole new different way yeah mm -hmm. yep. they should have called them broom fish <laughs> if only they knew <laughs> leo 209 aquatics thank you for the super chat is a mat Ooh, matten filter question is a matten filter in a 10 gallon and a co-op sponge filter, too much water movement for a beta in a QT tank. 
till I get my Aquatop 5 gallon Pisces up. Uh, it depends on the water flow. So it really depends on your, your, air, your uh, air pump, right? Because in and of themselves, the sponge filter, or the matten filter is only going to provide the, the flow based on the amount of air you're pushing through it. If you find in that 10 gallon that your betta is constantly laying off to the side, it's up in a corner somewhere, it looks like it's really fighting water flow, then yes, it's probably too high. If So I guess the other question would be in the 10 gallon, if that matten filter is cycled in that 10 gallon, you don't need the sponge filter because matten filters have a massive, massive surface area. But if it's if it's not if neither one of those things are cycled and you're just like oh hey I threw some Fritz Lime Seven or something in there I'm looking for surface area then yeah I, you could definitely leave both of them in there, or if it's a case where okay the matten filter's there and the sponge filter was cycled, then yeah you'll probably have to leave. But it's all about the air pump. So if you have an adjustable air pump, which is another thing, just like I like the adjustable hang on backs, I really like adjustable air pumps because. And you've had those before too, right? Where you can just kind of turn it down and be like, okay, yeah. this is better mm -hmm. because, you know, this air pump is built for a, you know, it says up oh, to 55 gallons or 40 gallons. Like, <laughs> I'm using it for a five. I'm like, well, yeah, that could be a could problem work. as water's just bubbling out the side of the tank. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the story. Um, So Andy Rink is here. Um, You should check out my video that I did last week on some really sweet botanicals from you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that was all, that was all yeah. you. So, uh, quick note, if you see me doing this oh. a couple times, quick story, I don't know, about maybe a week ago, no, it was probably a little longer, maybe a week and a half, maybe two weeks ago, I just, you know, like those little noceums, those little bugs that fly around, all of a sudden I saw one in the house, I'm like, it's the middle of winter, where'd this thing come from? Then I saw a few more, <laughs> and pretty soon, That's everywhere funny. I went, I'm going, I'm like, what is this with all these bugs? Well, what happened in the last, I don't know, three or four weeks? Tell us what happened in the last three or four weeks. Well, I've gotten a lot of plants. Why did you get a lot of plants? For my other channel, for my land channel. For your land channel, Container it's Joy. me. And yes, uh, there's, I will never yeah. have to buy flowers again. If I did, it wouldn't matter because she'd be like, yeah, those are boring. I've already got those. But in <laughs> one of your major land plant hauls for one of these head yeah. plant escape things Something, you did, she must have brought in, in like a cocoon of those little no CM eggs because... Now we've got like no CM sauce on the counters trying to <laughs> trap these things. But anyway, yeah, if you see me slapping better, myself but, in the face, yeah. it's not like a nervous tick. It's these stinking bugs have now, yeah, they're in nasty. here. Yeah. yeah. But it's being remedied. It's being, yeah. Don't worry, I'm on it. I'm on the case. Although I don't know. I think like the first 10 or 15 died in that sauce you made. And then everybody else was like, wait a minute. I'm not going in there because <laughs> I'll, see my I'll brothers my, in yeah, there. Yeah, they're all dead. So no, I didn't see any new inhabitants in there. So I, I don't leave know. it as a warning for others to get the heck out. Yeah. Do you want to end up like them? Otherwise, Either go outside and freeze or go in the special sauce. But there's <laughs> another one. Okay. So Donnie G says, sorry, I got here late. That's okay. It's we okay. forgive you. Welcome. Do you have a video of your favorite hang on backs? Actually, yes. Um, it, well, I have, like I said, I have a couple of my favorites, and I don't, I've never really made it a secret. I like the Seacom titles. I like the new Marine Land Pros. I have done review videos on every, I believe, every Seacom title filter, hang on back filter, which is the 35, the 55, the 75, and the 110. Marine Land Pros, I've done videos on the uh, 375 and the 450. But, you know, if you wanted a smaller Marine Land Pro, the same general rules apply. And I've done videos on AquaClear versus the Seachem. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I've got an AquaClear 110. I like it. It's doing a great job. So nothing against the AquaClears, although in the past I've been a little rough on them. Uh, the one that I've gotten recently has softened my view on the AquaClears lately because it has been an absolute beast in the 125 doing what it's supposed to do. So it's, it's winning my heart over a little bit. I think we have a quote. We do? Oh, we might. Boy. First, I thought you were, this was you, that you were <clears throat> just sharing because I'm like, that's cool. All I'll right. Spill water this on is myself. from Valerie. I want to be a professional whistler. I'm pretty good now, but I want to be like even better. <laughs> is it a movie is, quote is or is it just Valerie's quote? quote? I don't know. Because Valerie just might want to be a professional whistler. And I feel that if, if that's you. Because then you'd have to be up there I, with I've never like heard of a movie Crosby, like that. Because he was pretty darn good. 
Aqua Gardens then, and I, I just have a feeling they know fungus gnat. That does that sounds yeah. nasty. Fungus gnats? Yeah. Or, Is that what yeah, they are? That's what they're called. Or, I don't um, need these in my life. Or um, <clears throat> they call them. Uh, all right. Anybody have yeah. any any uh, advice? Like, cause yeah. she just put out some like well, sauce poison for him, and I did. I smash them when I see them, but this plants, is getting a little. It's I, ruining my life. I have heard like neem oil, but I just want to make sure before I I start spraying it on plants, and it turns out that they oh, really yeah, like them. Like if you have them already, don't use it sort of yeah. thing. But yeah, and then I'm gonna get some other sticky tree things, and it's just gonna be it's gonna be fine. It's all gonna be good. I'm gonna take care of it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Can can you give us some advice? How do you oh, get rid of those little no? Somebody said step brothers. Oh, is that what that is? Okay. I haven't seen right, moving in a long time. Tell me, though. Tell me which one wants to be the professional yeah. whistler. Is it Will Ferrell? It probably is, right? Probably. I don't know. I haven't seen it moving in such a long time. Know, Kalina I... says that her quarry cats, Panda Quarries, are currently doing the dance. That's the, oh, we're going to make baby little quarry... babies. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Baby I don't think I've so actually cute. ever seen. I showed you the albinos when we bred those. Remember? No. And they all no, they you, all came out of the breeder box. Or no, I didn't you, show you. I said we had them, and then we said, went down there. Yeah, and then by the time I was there, they were not there anymore. Yeah, yeah, they all kind of just jumped that out and went so down cute. the thing. I don't thing. think I could like even handle it. Yeah, no. yep, that's that's can true. Can you imagine baby pygmy quarries? Yeah, I can imagine them. They're small. Mm. All right, let's see. Karen K at Primetime Aquatics, did you mm -hmm. find? That the Marine Land Pros didn't fit well on the tanks. I tried a 450 on a 75 and it wouldn't sit level. Actually, that's a really good point. Not so, I didn't find that to be an issue. What I did find, what is an issue, and I don't know how this is going to be remedied. I, I really don't know because it's a problem. If you are like a, a meticulous about your tanks and the way that they kind of appear, the one drawback of the Marineland Pro series is the internal filter it, it's it sits like right it sits pretty high and it's it's fairly thick so what winds up happening is if you have standard glass lids on your tank I have yet to be able to push the glass lid all the way back and have it completely rest within the frame it sticks out and it's not far but it's like I don't know maybe a, a third of an inch three-eighths Maybe, yeah, maybe if it's about three-eighths of an inch, it just rests on top of the frame in front. So if that is something that's going to bother you, then then you'll probably want to look at the C-Chem. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. It doesn't bother me at all because it it's it. I don't really notice it. But it is, and like I said, I don't know how they're going to fix that because unless they can just make the housing smaller, it's just what it is. But not this way. I have never had an issue with it. Uh, not leveling out. We've got, like I said, we've got the 350s, the, uh, I'm sorry, the 375s, the 450s. We've had them on 75s. We've had them on 150. I have them on 150s. Haven't had a problem. Hmm. All right, I'm going to grab a couple questions and it has a theme. Let's okay. see if you can guess the theme. Oh boy. All right, so uh, this question is from Jason Holmes. Plant nerd, yes. Biological explanation nerd, not so much. <laughs> I agree. Okay, that's funny. <clears throat> um, now, this, this question is from uh, Jason Peculiar over the pond. Good morning, by the way. I think it's probably like 2, 3 a.m. Yeah, there in Scotland. To Top of the morning to you. Huh? Huh? Okay. I have a bare glass tank with only a sponge filter and a heater in it. It houses some CPT fry, and it's super cloudy. It has a twin tank next to it that isn't cloudy. Mm -hmm. Any tips? Well, I always start with water parameters. So obviously that is one thing. If you've got two tanks that are exactly the same, set up the same, and one's cloudy, one's not, just check your water parameters. Make sure you've got no ammonia, no nitrite. You know, nitrates aren't going through the roof. Uh, that's that's where I start. If those things aren't happening and the fry are doing okay, then I don't tend not to worry about it as much. We have in our fish room, we have a, and I mentioned this I think last week or the week before, we have a tank in our fish room. It's our Blue Dream shrimp breeding tank it's a 40 gallon breeder the only things that are in there are i don't know maybe a few hundred blue dream shrimp which in a 40 gallon breeder is nothing one long fin bristlenose pleco and uh some of those uh bamboo shrimp hmm. that's it it's very lightly stocked that tank is ridiculously just cloudy and we can do a 75 percent water change and a day later guess what it's cloudy now i think it might be the 
the dragon stone that's in there. It's just yeah. constantly releasing stuff. But in your case, you said all you got is a sponge filter and a heater, so it's not that. Yeah. I would check water parameters. That's where I would start. And then not worry as much about it as long as everybody's looking good, eating, you're getting good fry survival. Killer, killer kitty OE, thank oh, you for the hey, super chat. Kitty. Both rock. Speaking of rocks, <laughs> I bought some from my local fish store. When I went to rinse them, they are releasing a lot of little bubbles. Is this normal? Little bubbles. Lots of little bubbles. I trying to think if we've ever had that happen where water so you're rinsing them and so are you soaking them and they're releasing bubbles because that can be normal yeah they can especially like the dragon stone the seiryu mm -hmm. stone i've noticed that stuff can release a ton of trapped air once you put it in water and just that pressure it forces bubbles out so that could be what it is that's yeah. if it's just plain water that would be my guess as to what it is it's just once you get the water pressure in there especially in seiryu stone and, and dragon stone it just forces air out Get some bubbles, a little bit of bubbles. Uh, um. All right. So, Kristen, uh, when will you be taking the fish off your website? We take the they we take it off like right like first thing in the morning, right? Uh, on Sat on Sunday, yeah. So right. uh, you're referring to the swap. So the yeah. fish that are on PrimetimeAquatics.com that are for pre-order for the swap, we will leave them up until Sunday morning. Basically, we wake up Sunday morning at like 4 a.m. We make sure we don't have any more orders that came in on Saturday night. The first thing I tell Joanna to do is shut the, you know, pull all those things down off the website so that we can make sure that we didn't get an order after we bagged all the fish and we're on our way to the swap. So they will be up mm -hmm. until Sunday at probably 4 a.m. or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and FYI, anybody looking for uh, botanicals, Rink is going to have a table. Oh, cool. On Sunday. Yeah. So all those cool things that you featured Heck are going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Those are. It's cool. There's a lot of stuff, like I said, I didn't realize. I know. Had. The world of botanicals. No idea. Whips world, remember this, all of you. Nothing counts so much as blood. The rest are just strangers. I don't know, dude. I think I'm only good at movie quotes that of movies <laughs> I've watched, and I like watch multiple times, because well, now the pressure's course. on, I'm freaking out, and I don't you know. You have to watch a movie to know the quote. Do you, though? Yeah, I think so. I mean, generally. I don't know. So wait, what, what is the Say hello again? to my little friend. I don't think I've ever seen that whole movie. I don't no, even me remember. Either. What is that? Um, isn't that... That's the one with um, Al Pacino. And it's not... Al Pacino, yeah. um, I know Scarface? That movie. Yeah, it is. I've never... And I, I'm I've ashamed. Never seen it. I've never seen that never movie seen and that I know one. that. Taxi Driver? Never seen it? That's another big quote from there. Like, uh, you talking quote? to me? You talking to me? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant the same quote. No. In Taxi Driver, say, say hello to my little friend too. <laughs> no. It's his taxi. <laughs> <laughs> run somebody over no. hey you got that from another movie <laughs> all right let's see wait um okay so valerie say i can only hope to be a professional whistler i am probably just slightly better than that silly lemur king julian from madagascar <laughs> ah, oh my yes, gosh yes. if you missed my comment say no. hello to the new york pansies <laughs> that's right king julian king julian yeah. so fun oh my gosh we, we watched madagascar. we watched that movie a oh, lot of times when the boys Marty, were Marty, little. Marty, Marty. The only movies that we watched more were Cars. Cars. That, and uh, was there any others that we watched more than Madagascar? Cars, definitely. I mean, I've, I've seen the movie Cars at least a few hundred times because that was all they um, wanted to watch. Back in the day, we did watch Open Season a lot, but then that one... I that, didn't. That I, I wasn't, yeah. I funny wasn't Bear. a big fan. Luke would call him Funny Bear. Yeah, I usually left the room. I just didn't. I yeah, wasn't a big funny fan. funny quotes from that movie, too. Let's see here. Gaming and fish keeping... Is the stock Tetra Whisper IQ10 sufficient filtration for a 10-gallon tank? Yeah. Any, I am of the opinion they're not all the they're not all the same in terms of their quality and how quiet they are. And they all you know filters have different features, but I am of the opinion that any filter that is rated for a particular volume is more than sufficient, certainly for biological filtration, which is by far the most important. Right. So. Creating space that's going to allow you to have surface area to house the beneficial bacteria, if it's rated for that, and even if it's not, usually the size of that compartment is far larger than what you need for most tanks. Of you know, so if you've got one that's rated for a 10 gallon, I, I put fill, hang on back filters that are rated for 10 gallon on like a 40 breeder just to keep water flow and never had an issue with like an ammonia or nitrite spike. Now, that being said. 
the mechanical filtration, it might not have the flow to get enough water through in gallons per hour to suck the stuff out of the water. But for your case, yeah, if the, that thing will be more than sufficient for a 10-gallon tank. Hmm. So. All right. <clears throat> Pal Joey, let's see if you can let's see if you can get this movie quote. Oh boy. I came to Casablanca for the waters. That sounds like an old movie. Well, you get it then. All right. Can... This this okay, so this does everybody understand now what I deal with? The name of the movie was actually in the quote. Casablanca. All right, yeah, that was what I was going to say. He doesn't appreciate fine music or fine I movies think I was, from the, the fantastic I, era known as the 30s, 40s. Oh, what happened to our light? Okay, oh. hold on. It died. <laughs> We're going to have to go to backup oh. light. Oh, no. Yep, sorry. Cold Ow. lighting. Okay, so. Yeah. See, that's uh, what happens when you make fun of me. The light goes I know, out. I was making fun of you. Yep. Anyway, oh, oh Abigail I, says Cars was my brother's favorite. Oh, that's so cool. Is our favorite. I yep. love it. That's very cool. When the boys move out and stuff. We're just gonna watch it all the time and cry. Well, you're gonna cry. That's what I'm gonna do. Don't don't lump me into your crying. Let's see. Ooh. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Fish TB Mycobacterium prevalent in the hobby? Question mark. Funny you should mention that. I just did a video on that in the members video uh, last week. We talked about uh, Mycobacterium marinum because that can potentially lead to wound infections in human beings. Is it prevalent? I don't know necessarily if I would say it's prevalent. Is it out there? Absolutely, yeah. And it is basically non-treatable so, in fish. So if, if you wind up with a fish with TB, what's gonna wind up happening is it's gonna slowly wither away. Uh, antibiotics, the ones that we have for fish, generally don't work. So. Unfortunately, what that means is if somebody has TB in a tank, you really want to try to isolate that tank if you've got other tanks um, because it's, yeah, it's not a good situation. Now, if the, like when we talked about it last week in the members only video, Mycobacterium marinum, if it infects a wound, the prognosis is very good, right? It, it's very rarely ever life threatening. Uh, even for immunocompromised people, uh, generally it kind of looks like it blisters over a little bit. Uh, antibiotics are prescribed, but the antibiotic treatment is fairly extensive for human beings. It can last months and months. So, but in fish, it's pretty much non-treatable. But I wouldn't go so far as to say it's it's prevalent, but it's mm. out there. Mm. Hmm. Matthew, Matthew does stuff. Had to go. Bye, Matthew. Bye, Matthew. Okay. Case two says. What's a movie you guys watched too many times when you were kids? <sighs> oh gosh, a movie when I was ki a kid. Oh, um, well, I don't know if I was a kid. It was like more like teenager. Um, Ghostbusters. Oh, <sighs> Ghostbusters. Night Nightmare Before Christmas. I could I could sing all the songs, and um, Beauty and the Beast. I, I saw that in the theater. Um, those would be my... Yeah, mine was Star Wars, but I wouldn't say it was too much. I would just say it was... we. Wa I watched it a lot because it came on... I remember specifically... VHS? No, it came out on cable, like when cable was like a, oh, a newer we didn't thing. Have cable. And so I remember probably being in like the second or third grade or something like that. And one of my classmates said that, and I don't know if this is true, or maybe I'm misremembering it, but I thought they said that HBO had played Star Wars like 30 times in one week. Hmm. Is that possible? Yeah, I saw, yeah, it is because that would be what, like four times a day. Yeah, but I, I, I know I saw it a lot when I was a kid. As a, I know I was a kid when um, uh, it's a Wonderful Life when they bought then the uh, what is it the copyright issue or something like that when it went um, it lapsed so that they could play it on TV and they played it on TV all the time. I watched that. Yeah. Tons. Lumpy dog. When the lights go down in the fish room. <laughs> Yep. Nice. We fixed it. That's right. We fixed it. Mm -hmm. Oh, Monsters Inc. was the other one that the that oh, was the one yeah. that the boys watched a lot. But yeah. I really like even more than Monsters Inc. I like MU, Monsters University, which is Monsters Two. I thought that was a great movie. Really funny, cute. Mike Wazowski. Mike um, Wazowski. Rink says on your website you show the GCA GCCA is 10 a.m. till noon. I believe it's till one. Yes, but we. Um, 
Just for pick up, yeah, fish pickup, we want them picked up by noon because if we have a no show, then mm-hmm. I don't want to bring them home and I'm going to sell them. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that will avoid restocking fees for the person who bought them and didn't show. So, okay. Amanda says, well, no, she was talking to somebody else. Never mind. Uh. Delta Charlie, good evening. Do you have any tanks where Hang On Back doesn't provide enough flow? Do you use power heads anywhere? And I knew both of those quotes before you said them. Scarface and Taxi. Well, like, how about oh, that? Oh, the, okay. So did I say Scarface? Or did I say... Uh, well, we you you mentioned them. Yeah. Yeah. Did I, did I get that one right? Yeah. Okay. So to answer your question, do we have any tanks where the hang of backs do not provide enough flow? No. Only because... What winds up happening is when I have a tank that's at least four feet long, I do doubles. So if I'm doing hang on back, so if I was doing exclusively hang on backs for a tank that was four feet long, I'd have two smaller ones as opposed to one larger one. For sponge filters, I have two sponge filters on either side. Where it gets a little tricky is the the four or the uh, forty gallon breeders that are three feet long, because they're kind of like they're not quite four feet. That's like if you do one hang on back filter, you put it in the center, then you're fine. But no, I don't I don't use any wave makers and I have I'm trying to think of if, if I've ever used a wave maker in our tanks. I don't think I have. I think I've had them in the fish room. I can't remember ever plugging them in. That being said, we ha- we do use a couple of internal canister filters and those bad boys are basically behave like wave makers but just with a filter compartment connected to them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm. You bumped right. the microphone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Probably. Raymond says Kung Fu Panda. That's a great movie. Kung Fu My Panda. My dad likes that one too. All right. Here's a quote that I think you're going to get. Whoops world. You're being really nice to him. You're going to get this. I'm probably not. Oh, yeah, you will. Yeah. Yeah, you, okay. you'll get it. I'm on okay. a bad streak. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me you built a time machine oh. out of a DeLorean? All right. Thanks go. for giving me the softball. Nice. Um, yeah, that was Ghostbusters. Ah, <laughs> Just kidding. One. Wait a minute. Oh, Back to the Future. I yeah. couldn't Oof. I couldn't think of the, the actual name. Oh, just... here we go. All right, pal Joyce, given top five. Manchurian Candidate. I actually don't know if I've seen that one. Uh, I'm going to put that on my list. Um, my Fair Lady. Love it. Um, but what about Sabrina? I'm going to throw that one back at you. And then uh, Casablanca. Okay. The Godfather 1 and 2. Okay. Bad movie. What about White Christmas? You didn't list White Christmas. Oh, boy. 12 Angry Men. Great movie. I like 12 Angry Men. That's the only black yeah. and white movie I think that I it's like. I, I go out of my way to watch. Um, and it's not because it's, it's just high roll. Mm-hmm. So everybody's allowed to like older movies. Absolutely. Yeah. Rams asked a good question. Can Bishers be in a community tank? Well, that depends on the type of community. They're, they get big. Huh. They get big and they are predatory. So would I be sticking them in a tank full of a bunch of Tetras? Only if I wanted the Tetris to go away. Um, but I, I, it's been a while. I've only had one bite shirt in my life, so I'm really not a good source. Like John at KG Tropicals, he's, he keeps them. He'd probably be able to answer that better than I would. But my inclination is with smaller, typical community fish, I wouldn't trust it. They would have to be big enough for them not to eat. And that gets to be, that's just, yeah. Eli says, I have 125 gallon width. 18 de Masonai, 8 Bumblebee Cichlids, 8 Rusties, and 3 Synodonis Lucipinus. How many more Rusties and de Masonai can I add before being overstocked? Oh, you've got some space there, my friend. Uh, and a 125. So here, here's the deal. In our 75, I have somewhere around, I don't know, 22, 23, 24 full for the most part full grown imbuna in that tank and at one point there was probably closer to 28 or 29 so you've got 26 34 you like that math in my brain 34 37 uh, with the lucipennis the bumblebees do get big though right so that's not your typical four inch cichlid you've got some I mean, the Demason and the Bumblebees are probably good tank mates. I'd keep an eye on those Rusties. I don't know how, how large those fish are right now, but you might find that the Rusty Cichlids just can't keep up with the Demason and the Bumblebees. They might be a little too rough. If I were doing that, so you've got, in terms of, so you got 30, what, 34 we said? Um, yeah, you could probably add at least another 
half a dozen fish in there. I would just make sure that they can keep up with the Demason eye and the bumblebees. So like your Kenny eye are pretty good. Your red zebra cichlids, they'll, they'll give you a different color, right? Especially the red zebras, right? So they'll give you that red and that orange where the bumblebees are giving you kind of that yellow and brown. And they're going to, you know, the males will get a really dark color. The Demason eye gives you the nice blue color. So uh, rusties give you kind of, depending on the substrate, either purpley or kind of a darker brown mix if it's on darker substrate. So Kenny eye will add in that yellow. Although they do look somewhat, the females look somewhat similar to the mason eye, so you might get some hybridization there and possibly some bullying there. So maybe those wouldn't be a great idea. Red zebras. I hesitate to say the erratus because, oh my gosh, you know, everybody knows me. <laughs> the erratus cichlid is just not my friend. I don't like it. Hmm. So, okay. What you got? Oh, uh, Raymond said Megamind. I didn't get Megamind. that one. Megamind. Yeah. yeah. YOLO. I remember that. Uh, there was a question I was going to grab. Um, well, hold on. Let me get the super chat here. Brislin76, thank you so much for the super chat. 40 stock video is awesome. Thanks. For the schooling group, could you do six Daniel and six Neon Tetras? Could you add Blue Dream Shrimp to that community? So, the fish mix, probably. I don't see why not. I mean, the Daniels are a little more rambunctious than the Neons, but I, I, they're most likely going to leave them alone, especially in a 40-gallon breeder. The Blue Dream Shrimp with those adults with some hiding spots, maybe. Although I, I don't trust Daniels around shrimp as much, even though the adult shrimp are probably going to be close to the size of an adult Daniel. Shrimplets will undoubtedly go missing. Your Both the Daniels and the Neons will pick them off for sure. They'll be like, oh, thanks for the tasty baby food. <laughs> um Shrimp dinner. Yep, shrimp, little shrimp dinners. So it just depends if you want to take that chance. And if you've got a ton of hiding spot, you know, so a hiding spot meaning, oh, I've got a bunch of choya wood in the tank or I've got a bunch of java moss or some really heavily planted stuff, you'll get higher survival rates. What's up? All right, so um, this comment is from Oink Master Supreme. Whatever. Cool. Microbacterium marinum is no joke. Yeah. Please take this seriously. I contracted it. And because I have lupus, my complications were very bad, and I will never fully recover from it. Don't panic. Just be aware. Yeah, mm. that's a, that's great advice when it comes to... And, and one of the things that we talked about in that video, in the members only video last week, is check your hands. So when you're when you're going to do any maintenance on a fish tank, if you've got cuts or scrapes or open, you know, not stuff that hasn't healed yet... Is it, do you really need to go into that tank that week, right? Do you really, certainly don't be picking around in your hang on back filters or grabbing your sponge filters and getting all that stuff in there too. But it just takes two seconds. Make it a habit. Make it that thing that you do. So when you're doing tank maintenance, most likely you're like, okay, I'm going to unplug the, the heater. I'm going to unplug the hang on back filter and I'm going to just check and make sure I don't have any cuts on my hands. Is it a super common infection? No, uh, we talked about the incidence rate being, and members will probably have to correct me, but I think it was like one in, it was like 0.27 per 100,000 people. So it's like one in 300,000 people will contract it. And half of those people contracted it via fish aquariums. But it's just one of those things. Check your hands. As long as you don't have any cuts or anything, the, the bacteria is not going to colonize you intact skin, right? Your skin, we talk about microbiology and immunology, is your skin is one of the best, it is the best physical barrier you have to preventing infection. There aren't that many things, infectious agents, that are going to get through intact skin. There are some things, there are some parasites that can wiggle their way through hair follicles and things like that. But in terms of bacteria and viruses, Intact skin is your number one thing. So if it's if it's fine, if your your hands are fine, not really a lot to worry about. But yeah, if you've got cuts, the the problem with Mycobacterium is it grows. And this relates back to the question about fish and why it's so hard to deal with. Mycobacterium grows very very slowly. It's got a very slow replication rate. Now, and the surface that's like well, that's good, right? It is and it isn't. It's good in the fact that it doesn't typically overwhelm a host right away in like the matter of days. It's bad in the sense that the antibiotics that are used to treat bacterial infections work more efficiently when the microbe is replicating more quickly. It destroys that, that ability to replicate, and that's what really destroys the microbe. 
mycobacterium grow slow, so that's why the antibiotics, you have to be on it for a really long time. Whether you're talking about tuberculosis of the lungs or a mycobacterium infection, like a wound infection. That's why we're talking about instead of, hey, take your antibiotics twice a day for seven days, and you know, okay, my strep throat's better, my ear infection's better. Different thing. Mycobacterium, now you're looking at an, a, a prolonged treatment protocol and often multiple antibiotics to reduce the likelihood of antibiotic resistance. So you could be looking at months on antibiotics and make no mistake, when we talk about this in microbiology, you're gonna to have to let me nerd out, please just let me nerd out for a couple of minutes. I know it's not 100% related to fish, but it kind of is. In microbiology, we talk about all chemicals are toxic to life in high enough concentrations. Water is toxic to you in high enough concentrations. In biology class, we talk about people who actually overdosed on drinking too much water and died, all right? My, antibiotics, medications, have what's known as a therapeutic index. There's a certain amount that you can take before, you know, where it's going to destroy the microbe and leave you relatively unharmed. But the longer you continue that treatment, the more problems can arise. So yeah, check your hands and you'll be okay. We're not trying to freak people out. It's, again, it's relatively uncommon, but just don't do stuff when you got cuts on your hands. Okay, so there, there's a quote. Can you get this one from Fish Pan? 20 L long. Oh boy. All right. Oh boy. Excess within control. Oh, I don't know. That doesn't ring any bells. I'm going to take No, I it wouldn't I'm be like so a, bad. I, I can pop out like movie a, quotes cuz see here's here's the secret. It's like a Brad Pitt or a, here's, um, Yeah, the secret is most of the movie quotes I give you are from movies that I'm kind of weird and Joanna will be the first one to tell you this. In our room, on top of our DVD player, there's probably like 15 DVDs, maybe 20. These are movies I watch all the time. Like I, If all I had were those 15 or 20 movies for the rest of my life, I would be perfectly content because yeah. they're like my favorites. I'll just keep watching them over and over again. I'm like a little kid where you like those little kids with their watch the movie Cars 200 times or, <laughs> hey, read me the same story every night before I go to bed from the time I'm three, year old to three years old to five years old. I'm that kind of person too, only as a grown-up because I'm weird like that. So that's why... I can do movie quotes, and I and the movies I watch a lot, I can quote the whole stinking movie to you, but movies I've only seen once or maybe just saw half, then yeah, mm -hmm. it gets bad. So you gotta let us know. I didn't see the uh, answer yet. Yeah, you gotta let us know. And um, pal Joey, I stay away from all modern remakes, so no problem there. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to nice. see that though because I did not realize that uh, Angela Lansbury was in there. <laughs> What's the matter? And this is all your fault. Those little fly things. Can anybody see them? Like, can you see them? I'm just curious. Can you see it like when they fly like right by our face? The worst is when they get by your ear. It's like, what are you doing over there? <laughs> all right. So, uh, Brislin says, will the Daniels get along with the centerpiece Rams and the forty gallon? They should. Yeah. I mean, I don't see why they wouldn't. Aqua Garden Zen, thank you very much for the super chat for the fungus gnats mosquito bites. <laughs> Read package. Mosquito bits. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, let's see. I'm scrolling around. I'm going back the other way. Case two. I have my hands in my tanks, hand feeding huge cichlids for about an hour at at a time every other night. I was, I was my hands three or four. I wash. I must. I wash my hands three or four times after very hot. Still, my palms get itchy sometimes, but it's fine. Yeah, like I said, as long as you're Skin is intact. Usually, it's not uh, not much to worry about. David says, "I love my brilliant green pea." <laughs> okay, wait. I, mean, I just said that out loud. I was thinking brilliant green raspberries. We're yeah. just gonna go with that. Brilliant green. Like you were meant to say brilliant green raspberries, and like the P mm -hmm. was supposed to be an R, and then you accidentally hit enter. You're like, "Oh crud!" If not, you just made me say something really funny. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, David says, oh, here we go. Do I need to run CO2 with a, with a having a pretty heavy planted tank? I run root tabs and liquid fertilizer. Is that enough with uh, okay light? It depends on the plants. So if they're mostly your low to medium light beginner plants, yeah, most likely you don't. I mean, we don't run CO2 in any of our tanks. And so we've got Anubias, we've got Crips, we've got Bacopa, we've got Hornwort, we've got Guppy Grass. We've got all kinds of stuff. I'm just, I don't know, Jungle Val, Corkscrew Val, Microsword. Uh, what else do we have? 
all the different types of Anubias. Wait, wait. Java fern, Java moss. So if you're running a lot of the stuff that you could just walk into a Petco or PetSmart or a local fish store and be like, okay, this is your typical plants. They don't generally need, I mean, will they grow a lot faster with CO2? Sure. But do you need it? No. Not usually. What you got? Right, this is this is a quote. I, oh my gosh! Oh it's like no, you're gonna know it. No, I'm not. Yes, you will. I'm really no, down on myself. Quotes. You don't understand, everybody. No, you got to start feeding me some softballs here. Well, you can do here. this. This is, but I just, um, I, I, it's like zooming right past me. I know it. I can't use this water bottle live stream anymore. I'm getting half the water on my shirt. I think. Are you ready? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Nice shooting, Tex. We know that. We do. Yes. I shoot. Ghostbusters. Okay, well, see, you've watched Ghostbusters a lot more than I have. I knew I knew it. Lately, I've only been watching it when you make me watch it because I watched it too much. Oh, uh, no, you can't ever watch Ghostbusters too much. Mm -hmm. Killer Kitty 08 says, Remember to catch Joanna and Jason's attention. Put the at primetime aquatics in front that's of your right. question and it will be highlighted mm -hmm. for them. That, that's for their true. Old eyeballs. That's right, because most of you know if you've been on these live streams for a while, my eyes are not the best. And uh, yeah. Sometimes I misread things. Like, what was the one? Uh, somebody will remind me. The, the um, fern fish? Fern fish, yeah. Fern fish. Yeah, went on about 20 minutes about a fern fish. Had her look up the fern fish. Didn't even say fern fish. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Snowball says, can you do a step-by-step -step video for aquas aquascaping? I am very bad at it and need to learn more. I have a 20 tall I need to do, but do, but... I don't know how to take up the vertical space. So you do not, under any circumstances, want me to tell you how to aquascape. <laughs> if you don't believe me, go back to the videos of Fish Room Tours in 2017, 2018. Go back and watch, especially the videos where I updated this tank, and you're going to be like, uh, dude, that looks like the before. The the before was really horrible, and now the after is just slightly not horrible. Piles of rocks. Yeah. The one that you would want, hmm. at least out of the two of us, is <laughs> this one over here, and she just did a video about that. Um, I did, but it was but just it was my, a tiny my, tank. It was just a tiny tank, yeah. so not a whole lot of uh, uh, stuff. Yeah, so you're going to – well, you've so you've done – if you were to go back, I, I guess, on the small scape and look at the tanks that you've done that were a little larger. I don't remember if we mm -hmm. put the 40-gallon angelfish tank that might have been on prime time. I don't remember if it was on ours or yours. Gosh, I don't remember. But, yeah, a lot of the, anything where you see on either the small scape or prime time aquatics in the last couple of years where it's like rescape or setup, those are probably good videos if you're looking for ideas, if, in, if, inspirations. I would recommend if you go on, uh, well, you can always look at YouTube, just type in your, your tank. Uh, aquascape 20 tall or 20 gallon and see what you uh, see if you have Pinterest that's also a really good resource if you if you look it up that way just look at pictures that you like and then try and figure out why do you like it do you like the shapes of the rocks do you like kind of like the general like shape of the scape and just start looking because the more you train your eye to see what you like the easier it will be for you to kind of replicate it um, escape that you really like. Unless you're me, and then I still can't do it. Uh, Dale says at Primetime Aquatics, I added a layer. Okay, hold on. He's, he's got advice. Ooh. I added a layer of aquarium gravel to the top of the potted plant soil that prevents the adult gnats from accessing and laying eggs in soil. So they lay eggs in soil. All right, so I didn't even know where these things were coming from. So do you have a bunch of pot? We don't even have that. We all we do um, right over there, don't we? We we have just, yeah, I have a few. Right. But yeah, I can top dress them. Sure, I can put... I got lots of gravel. Do it. All right, do Just it. Just because now all these things are probably, if we get overrun, I'm no. going to be okay. really, really sad. Uh, Chris <laughs> R., thank you so much for the super chat. My betta has like a white bump cottony thing near its gill, and I see him flashing and scratching. Tried API General Cure and Prozzi Pro, no luck. Most likely, if it's fuzzy, cottony, it's probably a fungal thing going on. In which case, the API General Cure, which I believe is metronidazole, isn't going to work. The Prozzi Pro didn't work. Two things with that. One, especially when it comes to fungal, if it is a fungal infection, and this could, still could be bacterial, temperature plays a role in that sometimes if it's fungal. Sometimes if the temperature gets too low, 
the fungal infections have a little bit easier time colonizing fish. So just make sure, especially for a betta, I'd like to keep them around 78, 79, somewhere in there, in that range. The other thing that you could do is, I know Fritz has a, um, what do they call that stuff? Fung, fungal guard, fungal something. They have a antifungal. If you go to fritzaquatics.com, uh, you can check out. They've got a, an antifungal. I don't remember what the brand name is, though, but that may be helpful. Um, if it's got it, ha, ha, ha. I think it's the same one that's been harassing us all night. I'm pretty no, sure. he's got a friend over here. Okay. Um, yeah, so you could try that. Antibiotics, maybe, but I would go the fungal route, potentially. Let's see. What else we got here? Dustin, is the vinegar test an adequate way to determine if an outdoor rock is safe for aquarium use? I don't think so. Uh, and the, there's two reasons why. Hmm. One, I don't think the vinegar is a strong, it doesn't react strong enough to what you're looking for. Uh, the acetic acid tends to work better. Two, when way back in the day I was doing these tests on rocks that we had collected from rivers and creeks, we dragged all these things home like, all right, I'm going to run the acetic acid test. And I would do it and I'd get all this bubbling. I'm like, oh, these, these rocks are no good. Yeah, they are. They're perfectly fine. The only thing that test is telling you is that it's probably going to alter water chemistry if your water is on the softer side and has a lower pH. Because I can tell you right now, all a lot of the rocks that we would do, if I were to do that test, they would bubble and I'd chuck them in our tank and they do zero to our water chemistry. Why? Because our water is already at around a pH of 8 to 8.2. And our KH is already at around 10 degrees, which is around 180 parts per million. And so if I add stuff like flagstone, if I add river rocks, if I add pretty much any rock that's relatively safe for an aquarium, it does nothing. Most rock in a very soft water, so very low GH, KH, low TDS, and pH that's a little bit lower, it's most likely going to have an impact. And so what I tell people to do, the best, if you want... The number one most bestest way in the world to figure out what's going to happen, don't guess. Get it yourself a 30 gallon tote. They cost like seven or eight bucks. Run to Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards. Get the hard black plastic totes. They're about 20, I think the 27 gallon with the, like the yellow top. Fill it up with water. Throw a, a air stone in there or a sponge filter. Chuck your rocks in there. Test your water before. Wait a few weeks, test it after, right? I mean, it's going to take some patience, but put it in the garage somewhere. As long as the garage isn't freezing, you come out there, the whole thing's frozen. I'm like, yep, you're trying to stick the little tester in there on the ice. Like, it's not working, man. But do it that way. See, what it, what is it doing to my pH? What is it doing to my GH? Is it doing anything to my KH? And if your water is still stable, then at least in terms of water parameters, it's okay. That does not mean it's 100% safe because you don't want to have rocks that are going to be leaching, you know, heavy metals in your tank. So it's like, you know, you know, I just got this big giant chunk of copper and it, it didn't do anything to my pH or my GH or my KH, but I threw it in there and everything died. So just be aware that that will at least take care of those issues for you. Oh, he landed right on my face in the middle of the live stream. I'm getting that thing. Mark my words. The minute this camera goes off, gravel. I... We're going to put gravel. That's not going to stop him from hitting me in the face. What are you going to do? I'm going to get him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get medieval. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's what's going to happen. Those those gnats are going down, and they're going down tonight. And, oh, yeah. If all I right. have to chuck all that poisonous sauce at him, like midair, it's happen. It, it's game on. Okay, you ready for a quote? You should get this. Oh, boy. If you I've don't. I've had a horrible see, luck all night. Okay, don't you My confidence it? is down. You, like, this is... This is all he does all day is quiz, quiz, quiz. Not all so day. how do you like it? Yeah, pretty much. All right. You ready? You should get this. I'm a precisional instrument of speed and aromatics. Oh, um, I've seen that movie. Speed. Aromatics. I, I, I can just, I can. You know. It's Mater. Oh, yeah, yeah. Toe Mater without the tuh. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. That's a good one. That's a good uh, one. Let's see here. Hold on, I had one. I had one that I wanted to answer, and then the movie. Oh, here was the. Uh, oh, I did. 
I did. I don't know where it's at. But the, uh, there's a question. Somebody was getting a beta for the first time. A what's beta. A, uh, what's a good uh, tank mate? Let me see if there was a... Lydia. This was Lydia. Okay. Um, can't decide on a tank mate. What would you recommend for a 10-gallon? So beta one, buddy. Yeah. So, one, we did a video. I mm -hmm. think it was called Beta Buddies. Beta Buddies. Uh, where we actually broke it down by tank size. And I think we assumed, for the most part, it was going to be in a 10, 5 to 10, 20 gallon. So, we did a whole video on it. Uh, which will be helpful. Uh, not that we won't answer your question now. In a 10 gallon, we've done a number of fish. Uh, we've done ember tetras. We've done gold tetras. We've done mystery snails, quarry cats. White clouds? Uh, not in a 10 gallon. Um, pygmy quarries might work in a 10 gallon. White clouds. Mm -hmm. I. The the only issue with and we've done that combo. Our water was basically at around 76 or 77 in that tank. So it was kind of like upper end oh, for the white clouds, yeah. lower end for the betta. So um, most of your your smaller tetras, like your embers, your golds, neon your tetras. neons, green neons, standards, black neons, those will all work for the most Mr. part. Mr. Snail? You never know 100%, right, in a 10-gallon mm -hmm. because you could wind up with a situation where the betta's like, yeah. I'm going to just chase these fish around and torment them. Or you could wind up with a situation where you get a couple of, you know, a bad bed of buddies, like a couple of gold touchers, like, ah, you know what? I don't know what it is about <laughs> that juicy red tail, but I just <laughs> think I need to chew on it. So you never know 100% of the time. I've always said you'll have better luck keeping those fish with bettas if, if the fish are decently well fed. They tend to fit nip a little bit less in our experience. Let's see. Somewhere in time. Oh, I don't know that one. Huh. All right, let's see. I'm scrolling around here. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Whips world. I have to remind myself that some birds aren't meant to be caged. <laughs> oh. You know that one? Yeah. Why do you know all these? Should I um, know it? Isn't that, is that Shawshank? Ooh. At the end? Isn't that Morgan Freeman oh, that, who says that? that? Say Wataneo. Yep, seen that movie a number of times. Yeah, tell me. Donnie tell me G, what's... you're probably seeing double. I've got two guns, one for each of you. I don't know what that is. Hmm. I'm just bad. We are men, men in tights, yes. <laughs> That's a... Uh, um... I'm gonna think of that. All right, you think yeah, of it. Yeah, Shawshank. Gonna... Okay, he said, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh, are you okay? I, I love that movie. Are I know you I do. Right? I have to get that. I don't think that was one of the movies. I think I have to add back to our collection. I don't know what happened to it. Somebody borrowed it, and now I don't know where it is. I only need to see that movie once, and I'm good. No, oh, you have to, that's no. a movie you could watch weekly. Oh my I gosh, really do think no. so. so Andy Dufresne. Why no. are you being so obtuse? No. All right, let's see. No, it says prime material for 2022 April Fool's video. Care and keeping of the f the fern fish. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Don't tempt me, man. <laughs> I might just do it. Yeah, I still I still get comments because now, you know, not everybody realizes that was an April Fool's thing that we did last year about the smallest fish in the world. If you haven't seen that video, you can go check it out. But I did a whole video on the smallest fish in the world, and I, there were people who were pretty upset, mm. like. This is a scam. This isn't real. I'm like, yeah, I know that. But then you watch it like six months after April, excuse me, after April Fools, and they're like, yeah. I don't see anything. <laughs> I'm like, no, you don't. Check the date when the video is released. Classic. Yep. I will right, we'll answer a few more, a couple more questions. I think Delta Charlie member for ten months. Months. Thank you so much. So, so, so. I know this isn't your preferred lighting tonight have you ever thought about dimming the four foot tanks behind you the glare always bugs me <laughs> <laughs> or the is it the glare or the glow off the shoulders yeah that could there be is it. a there is a glow yeah it is a little bit glary is yeah. it as bad i don't know if it's as bad as when we have the i'll have to go back and look um at least it would be nice if we could do something I'm just looking at the other screens to kind of dim that down a little bit. We'll have to, if you, if our we'll light have to work on that. If our light wouldn't have busted and you had to go to plan B. Yeah. 
We'll have to work on that, DC, otherwise known as Delta Charlie. Delta Charlie. Lydia says, I was thinking a mystery snail, but I'm not sure yet. So I, I don't think I quite finished my thought. One of the things that you might want to consider doing, if you know you're going to set up a 10-gallon beta tank, do all the other inhabitants first and then put the beta in. So the beta doesn't necessarily think, okay, this is mine. Now I've got these intruders here. I think I need to destroy them. Mm. So that sometimes helps. Not always, but sometimes. Snowball says, I have two mystery snails, and they keep laying snails but they never hatch. Is there a special thing to do as they hatch or are mine just not fertile? Um, most likely they're fertile if they're laying the eggs. The, the big thing with them is to keep the egg clutch moist. So I believe Life with Pets, right? Was it Life with Pets that did a video? She had a special little Tupperware thing that she does with like moistened... Um, I almost said toilet paper, uh, paper towels, and she pokes holes in the top. I think it was Life with Pets that did that video on how to ensure that your mystery snail eggs hatch. I never had to do it because, for whatever reason, in our mystery snail breeding Was it tank, Lab Snails? Maybe it was Lab Snails. Yeah, it could have been. I don't Check one of them. Lab Snails, L-A-V-S, Lab Snails, or Life with Pets. One of them... Now that I think about it, I think it was Laugh Snails, did a video on that where I thought it was really well done. It was it was simple. It was to the point. Uh, I never had to do that because in our 20-gallon, for whatever reason, they like to lay them on the underside of the lid. And because you got the sponge filter up there and enough of the water is hitting the lid, a lot of those eggs would hatch. And then in your tank, they were laying them right above the water line. Mm -hmm. We didn't make a big deal of trying to keep those egg clutches. And now they've stopped because I wish they would. I wish they would do some more because I would like to actually make a. Because those are the magentas and I like those. Yeah. But we had a couple egg clutches there hatch too, so it's just a matter of keeping them moist enough so that they hatch. Let's see. Delta Charlie, just a little too much whitewash over those beautiful tanks. Yeah, you're probably right. You're yeah, probably right. There's a lot of whitewash. Stephen says you a Rolling. fan of guppy grass. I'm not. I, I am. I'm not. Well, you're so, wrong. It's I can okay. That's fine. You can just be wrong. I'm just not a no. fan, especially in small tanks. You start off with little, and five seconds later, you got a lot. Negative Nancy over here. I well, all right. So to yes, there there are some downsides. So the upside to guppy grass is often it will start to grow very very quickly, hmm. and in doing so, so I always talk about how we don't use a lot. We don't use liquid fertilizers in our fish room really anymore at all. Guppy grass and hornwort, if you want them to continue to grow like crazy, sometimes you're going to have to add a little bit of liquid fertilizer. So it tends to to grow fast, die fast, and then when it does die, it leaves a tremendous mess. Also, it's some people don't find it necessarily to be the most attractive aquarium plant because it, if you take something like hornwort, it starts to grow at the top and it just kind of fills the top in a layer and you can just kind of pull out big chunks of it and keep it as like a nice thin layer. With guppy grass, and we do have some tanks that, that grow a decent amount of it, it just kind of spreads all over the place. And so it's it's a little bit it's a little bit more haphazard looking in my opinion. Shane, it's now a prime time or primate prime time partner. Thank you so much for being here. Glad you're here. Cool. Hope you like the experience. Yay. Um Oh, wait. No, I got this one. Do you? I'm going to see a quacks. I oh. hate it when my Schwartz gets in a knot. Oh, space May the Schwartz be, be with, with you. you. I wanted to say the name. I finally had one. I was like, boom, I got this. Space this is an easy one. Space balls Space balls the... Okay. Um, space how about this? The toilet paper. Space balls the lunchbox. <laughs> Merchandising. 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 Okay. All right. You ready? What I want from each and every one of you is a hard target search of every gas station, residence, warehouse, farmhouse. Hen is house, that men in black? House. Men in black, right? No. No? Outhouse and doghouse in that area. No, but... But what? You're close. How can I be close? I know. Different movie. Why would you Why would you think it's uh, men in black? Is it Independence Day? No. I don't no. know. Why? Actor. Who said it? I would have thought it would have been what's his face? Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. It was. 
Fugitive? Yeah. Okay, yeah, Fugitive. That's a good movie. That was All right. fun. I got that. Oh, man. All right. Rip, you're like, you're like 15 and yep. zip. Hey, I got, I just got that one. No, you got kind the Dorian one. Whatever. Huh. Uh, Amanda <laughs> says, guppy grass ends up everywhere. Yeah, it, it does. certainly can. I agree, it can. And the other mm. thing, too, is if you've got a filter with a, a fairly heavy flow, it, it does kind of blow all over the place, too. <laughs> to the count of 10. 1, 2, 10. Pew, pew, pew. That's home alone. Yeah. Noel says, just bought my very first floating plants this past week what? at my local fish store. What kind? Salvinia, I think. Hi, Or Selvinia so labeled. Mama. So excited. Any issue in my tanks with hang on backs with surface intake titles? So is there going to be any issues with the Salvinia? Do we have any Salvinia back here in one of no. these tanks? No. Is it big or is it small? It's medium. It's uh, just... Uh, um, how would you know it? Um, well, I, I think I remember your floating plants video. Yeah, it's similar so, to the redwood floaters. So that means strong flow is probably not going to be ideal. Mm -hmm. In terms of it getting sucked into the surface skimmer, I think it's too big, right? Because it's, it's bigger than duckweed from what I can remember, right? Now yeah, that... when I had um, my uh, bear paw tank, when I had the um, floating plants overrun and I had to remove all of them, uh, Salvinia wasn't one of them that I had an issue with. No, it's it mostly duckweed, duckweed. Yeah. giant duckweed, and the regia. So, most likely the sylvania is going to grow around the perimeter, away from the hang on back. The it could, I mean, it, yes, you're probably going to have a situation where it kind of butts up against that surface skimmer a little bit, but right. then it's just it's like okay, well, it's just sucking more water from the bottom of the intake, which is probably what you want anyway. So <laughs> it'll be okay. The the problem, well. What size tank was that? Did, did you say? I don't remember. Uh, first floating plants. If it's a Title 35, that becomes a bigger pain because I have that problem in my 50-gallon low boy where I've got a lot of duckweed and stuff, and just inevitably it gets stuck in the because the the Title 35 doesn't have an intake tube. It's just got kind of like a big giant surface skimmer looking thing, so that becomes a little bit more of a pain. Fish fan, 20 gallon long. Thank you for the thummy. Oh, the Thank you for up. the red thummy. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Let's do two more. We're going to do two more. Two more. We're going to call a night. We'll all go night night. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. I'm scrolling. <laughs> Oink Master says, uh, remember that fly swatter thing from Gremlins that the dad invented? Yes. We Mini need version that. for us? Yeah, we need I that. I remember that one. Yep, we need it. I think I only saw Gremlins once. it's getting way out of hand here with these little bugs. T-Disc Farmer. Y'all folks have any recommendations on aquarium tops for a 10-gallon betta and betta and co tank? So I don't know what that tank. I don't know if it's a standard tank. I mean, if it's a standard 10-gallon, which I'm assuming it's not. If it was, you can just go buy a 10-gallon lid at Petco, PetSmart. They're not terribly expensive. We use, and I, I know what you're going to say, so you can you can do your little hack here in a second. I use a lot of polycarbonate, which is greenhouse siding. You can just cut it basically with a really strong pair of scissors. Get the 8 mil size because it's a little bit thicker. You can cut that to size. Your hack for especially the 10-gallon was what? Dollar Tree frames, 8 by 10 frames. Get a couple of them and duct tape them together, or there's lots of different ways you can attach them. Um, it just you have to be careful, obviously, and the glass is much thinner than a normal tank lid would be. And you got to look at duct tape. And, well, well, I mean, if you don't mind that, I mean, I'm not. Depending yeah. on the type of uh, tape that you get, it could that's true. quite possibly match your frame. Yeah, that's true, because I guess you could do like different. You don't have to do silver duct tape, right? No. Oh, do you know how many duct tapes there are? There's like pretty sweet duct tapes out there. Didn't know you were. Stuff? Learn something new every day. Apparently, this one you over here that? is a duct tape connoisseur. Oh, adhesives and uh, tapes. Count me in. That's your thing. Oh yeah, that's part of like. Could you life. imagine? Washi my, tape. My main hobby and interest is tape. Tapes and adhesives. adhesives. <laughs> well, super glue, which I can't find my super glue anywhere. That's because I. That's a it. major issue this week. Do you? No, I didn't. Oh, I, don't know what I can't find it anywhere. That's a huge problem. Well, you'll have to My get Bob more. Smith Industries. I can't yeah. find it. Yuki, thank you so much for the super chat. Any recommendations for a light that creates that shimmering look in the tank? Mm. Yes, but I don't know if you're going to like this suggestion. <laughs> start the, saving. Yeah, start saving. Um, we, I did a video 
a while back. One, I did a basically like a, a lighting guide video, and in that video, I talk about different lights at different price points. And if you really want that high-end shimmering effect, in my opinion, one of the best lights that will give that to you are Kessel lights, K-E-S-S-I-L, Kessel. They are high-end. They are expensive. I did a review on the Kessel Tuna freshwater light. We have two of them going in a 75-gallon tank right now. That setup, if you were to try to replicate that setup in a four-foot tank, would run you north of 700 bucks. Now, if you've got a much smaller tank, like let's say like, oh, I've got a 20 gallon, well, then you're only gonna be into it for like 300 because you'll only need one of those lights. So basically, you need more or less one Kessel light to illuminate about three foot of space. So if you were running a six foot tank, it gets even more expensive. You're north of $1,000 because you'd probably want three of those Kessel lights either hanging from the, you know, a ceiling or they have like the gooseneck thing. But when it comes to shimmering, those lights absolutely will give you that, but they are not cheap. So when you see that shimmering look for the most part, expect to pay some money. Kessel, that's the way to go. Kessel. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see here. Whoops says, scroll up and see what you think about Alice B's question. All right, can you scroll up and see what you think about Alice B's question? Um, where is Alice B's question? I don't know where it is. Let's see who's going to find it first. Probably not me because I'm uh, bad at scrolling. Okay. All right, Joanna's going to try to find Alice B's question, and I'm going to look at other questions, and together we'll figure it out. Oh, here we go. All, All right. right. Can I keep my Saratoga um, arowana in a six foot, 100 gallon tank forever, or will I need to update tank? He's a baby at the moment. I want to add a couple Oscars or Severum. Thoughts? Okay. I don't know. Hold on. My initial thought is um, there's a bug on my head. Wait, Saratoga Arrow. I just want to see overall length because are these all oh, the Giardini? Okay. I, I just. Hold on. My initial thought is you said a six foot hundred gallon. I would say probably not, because they're they usually get pretty large from what I can remember, right? Mm -hmm. Grows to the length of thirty yeah thirty five inches. Holy cow! Yeah, I thought they those. I just I didn't want to say something stupid. So if the Saratoga arowana that you're describing is better known as the Giardini. No, that fish is going to need an absolutely massive tank at close to three feet long. Um, you're probably looking at, I'm thinking like an OFR, Ohio Fish Rescue type tank where you'd, you'd have something, it doesn't have to be very tall, but you'd probably want at least, at least a minimum of a tank that is three feet wide so it's easy for it to turn around at least, if not wider. And at least in terms of scale to look right, 10 feet long would be, would be what I would feel comfortable with uh, keeping that fish in long term. So mm -hmm. if we're talking about the same fish, and I think we are, but yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Paul spelled out Kessel. I like it with the dollar signs in there. Yeah, they're expensive. And I think yeah. I misspelled it when I said it too. I think I said I L E L. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so yeah, I, I don't. If, the, if it's a Giardini that really does get three feet, 10 foot by three foot tank would probably be the way to go. All right, let's see. We'll do one more. One last awesome question. And let's see what we got here. We're going to do one more. Ah, let's do this one. The fish lover. Can someone help me? with a dwarf and Buna stocking a 75 gallon. Heck yeah, that's, that's gonna be a cool tank. 75 gallon dwarf and Buna, Pseudotrophius psilocci, rusty cichlids. I know yellow labs aren't super super tiny, but those are, the, those are my three go-to combinations. They're not super aggressive. They're gonna be great in a 75 gallon. You could do six of each to start out with. 
and have an awesome tank. That's how I would roll, just for right now. Ray says, tank mates for rainbow sharks in a 40 breeder. I generally only try to keep one rainbow or red tail shark in a tank at a time because they start to get pretty rough on one another. Uh, so I consider both of those fish to be fairly aggressive. I prefer to keep them with South American type cichlids. So I've kept them with geophagus without any issues, severums, um, like firemouth type cichlids. So I tend to go that route. Uh, could you do maybe some rainbow fish, something that moves a little faster towards the top of the tank? Probably, but nothing slow moving, nothing that's community types, certainly towards the bottom. You could find that rainbow shark harassing things like quarry cats. Uh, any type of live bear is probably going to get whooped. Uh, maybe like a garami, like larger garamis might work, but yeah, those those guys can get pretty mean. Mike, thank you very much for the super chat. Thinking about getting an acrylic tank, never had one. Is it worth it in the long run in terms of the acrylic surface wear and tear? I don't have acrylic tanks, so I only have glass. Well, I shouldn't say that. We have a couple of small acrylic-ish type tanks, but nothing large. The main draw for acrylic tanks is the weight. So that's I think that's what a lot of people like. The weight and the fact that I guess for the most part, you don't have the issues with the seams, you know, because of the way that they're sealed. Uh, they tend to be something where if you're going to get a really large tank, a lot of people prefer the acrylic tanks over glass, both because of the weight and because of the potential durability of where the the panels are meeting. But if it was just a standard tank, I just go glass. But that's just me. All right, everybody, we have surpassed our time. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for everybody for all the super chats and stickers and all the moderators that were here hanging with us today, keeping keeping things going. Thank you for all the movie quotes. Yeah. I'm going to work on it. Next week I'm going to try to get a little bit better. Boy, boy. Yeah, I'm going to have to practice. So this week I'm just going to watch a bunch of movies and then I'll get, just I'll just them. know them all. That's yeah. what I'm going to do. There you go. But Good thank job. you so much. Really appreciate it. Hope you have a great rest of the week and we will see you next Wednesday, same time, same place. Thank you. See you next week. Say bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. And that...